born descendant of Clan Dumbrock, and I'll be shooting for my own hand. Oh. What are you doing? Merida! C curse this dress! Another arrow. Merida, I forbid it. Welcome to another episode on Host No More. This session is linked to the video on gaslighting in the abuse cycle, which you can take a look at at the top right corner of this uh, screen. So in this video, uh, in that video, I briefly uh, touched on the subject of role playing, where the narcissist turns your life into a story or a play uh, by adopting and assigning characters to almost everyone in your life so that they can have full command over your entire fate. So I realized that I've wrongly used the term role-playing, which has an entirely different meaning from what I intend to put across. But I'm sure you can understand what I was trying to convey you know, with my previous description. So in this video, I will be expanding on this topic. Thanks for tuning in today. And if you are interested to, know, to learn more about narcissistic relationship dynamics, abuse, recovery, and protection, I encourage you to subscribe and click on the tiny bell so you get notified every time there is a new video post. And if you feel you need further support or consultation, you can visit my website in the description below to book an appointment with me. Uh, I will also be starting a weekly live stream uh, on every Tuesday at GMT 7.30pm to answer questions and share some tips on dance therapy. So now that you're informed, let's begin. The narcissist will create or stage events in your life by playing a character and assigning different roles to their followers. This either creates a dilemma for their victim or incite reactions or behaviors that contradicts the victim's true nature. The aim of this choreographed act is to bend your mind and to seal the fate that they have in store for you. This is the narcissist's conspiracy. Alexandra Stein writes on BBC.com in an article titled Why It's So Hard to Stop a Cult that cults are structured like the layers of an onion with the most acceptable elements closest to the outside followed by increasing layers of secrecy and abuse as recruits move closer to the center. In the case of the Nexivum cult, the outer layers saw seemingly harmless self-improvement programs used to recruit the members, friends, family, and colleagues. But at its core, the leader exerts extreme levels of control, allegedly culminating in sexual abuse, violence, and the branding of his initials on female followers. Here we see that this outer layer is the mask or the character fabricated by the leader, to conceal the group's true identity. We see how important a facade is in keeping the recruits unaware of their initiation to the cult. Much like new members of a cult, victims of covert narcissists are often abused without their knowledge. Their reality is heavily manipulated by their captive with a string of lies and orchestrated events. Back to the article, we skip to the section on bringing leaders to justice. According to Forbes, the authorities were alerted to Nexivim's activities as far back as 2003, 
but the New York Times reported that early attempts to follow up complaints were rebuffed by officials who said that the women were acting consensually or that technicalities prevented legal action. This illustrates a key problem in prosecuting the leaders of cults. Members often say that they are acting under their own free will. Even if current or former members want to press charges, many feel too afraid because of possible repercussions or the stigma attached to having been a member. This is how the leader or the narcissist recruit followers to stage the perfect scene where their target, be it a new recruit or a threat, is the only one unaware of the play that is being enacted. They keep followers committed by instilling fear or a sense of obligation. These members are then trained to play different characters or roles to such a degree that their facade becomes so real and lifelike that it appears as if they are acting naturally or of their own accord, completely disconnected from other members of the cult throughout the entire carefully staged scenario. The article also writes, Many survivors say that coercive behaviors like isolation, control of relationships, monitoring, and humiliation also occurs in cults. These are all the tools used to direct or produce the events of a large-scale conspiracy for the purpose of devaluing current members to keep them subordinate and expanding their nation by recruiting more members. In another account on scapegoating, smear campaigns, and black sheep from thoughtcatalog.com by Shahida Arabi, we see how narcissists make use of the group to bully their chosen victim. It reads, Contrary to popular belief, narcissism can and does run in group dynamics too. It just plays out on an even more massive and destructive scale. Rather than one partner abusing another, there is an entire group working to undermine and plot against a chosen target. This is especially harmful to any chosen victim because research shows that social rejection activates the same areas of the brain as physical pain. Theoretically, being emotionally abused by a manipulative group can be at times just as painful as being physically assaulted. The front runners of such a group use enablers or what is colloquially termed flying monkeys to ensure that the recipients of such bullying are properly silenced. This is also known as mobbing, where a toxic individual enlists the help of others to carry out his or her vicious campaign and dirty work against another individual. So these flying monkeys will either be threatened or manipulated into despising the target. They might even be rewarded for dehumanizing the victim. And sometimes they are just following orders to protect themselves from being the next target. Returning to the article, we see this unhealthy abusive dynamic play out within the realm of the narcissistic family unit, friendship circles, workplaces, and anywhere at all where bullying is possible. This form of conspiracy may not be technically illegal, but it poses great harm to those who are targeted. The target suffers through unbelievable emotional, verbal, and perhaps even physical abuse at the hands of the toxic group, who uses them as a scapegoat for the group's problems and deviant desires. For an excellent example of how a narcissistic group dynamic can undermine and scapegoat one individual, one needs to look no further than the devastating bullying of Today Show co-host Anne Curry and her colleagues back in 2011 under the reign of Matt Lahr, who has now been exposed as a sexual predator. According to Vulture, executive producer Jim Bell reportedly launched what was known as Operation Bambi, a mission to eradicate Curry from the team early on in her employment. He, he denies this, of course. She was subjected not only to Lore's mistreatment, but also exclusion, taunting, and bullying by her other colleagues as a result. In 2012, a clearly traumatized Curry was forced to leave the show in a highly televised exit, despite the fact that she was, and remains today, a highly talented, empathic, and one-of-a-kind journalist. In fact, NBC lost more than a fifth of its audience after her departure. So in this example, we see that Curry, the victim, was targeted by her whole team 
from the very beginning of her job at the Today Show, without having a clue that they were conspiring against her. What is not spoken about in this article is the way these missions or operations are carried out. The narcissist employs the subtle covert collaboration between apparently distant or separate members of the team and even unrelated departments to corrode the victim's self-esteem, dignity and values through exclusion, persistent taunting and mass bullying as mentioned earlier. Here, each member would choose a role and stick to it. It can be a mentor, a superior, a friend, etc. They then make use of their role to orchestrate elaborate attacks against you, the victim, seemingly at random, and ultimately bringing about your termination from the crew. Some can play supporting roles to elicit your trust and act as the leader's informants. Some can play the role of the direct abuser. Some can put on characters in the background to encourage behaviors that diminish or defile you. Some can even pretend to show concern for your stress and offer to listen to your troubles, only to dismiss your feelings or accuse you for being unprofessional and weak. Being the scapegoat, the leader makes sure you have no allies ever and wears you down by attrition way past your breaking point. They have you cornered and outnumbered long before you even realize their sick agenda. So now let's continue with the article. Under the subsection titled Groupthink and the Bystander Effect, it writes...